can see I have zero makeup on and that is because I wanted to do my makeup on camera with you so you could see what I was doing. So avoid if you don't like that but I You guys really like these videos so I wanted to do a day makeup look for a really long time so I then like to kind of buff it into the skin rather than like stroke it on uh, but I absolutely love it, I love the coverage Hello everybody, as you can see I've got no makeup on. Today I'm going to do a video about the gold clubs in my bag and how far I hit them all, but first I'm going to show you guys how with a simple bottle of nail polish remover you can make a used golf ball look as good as new. Okay so I've been sorting out golf balls and I've got about 50 maybe 60 Pro V1s and Pro V1Xs in mint condition, but as you can see Loads of them have got lots of people's random pen marks all over. Now I'm a little bit precious with stuff like this. My golf clubs have to be clean. And with golf balls, I like them to look mint condition. And obviously just have whatever markings I choose to put on there. Doesn't really do it for me if I've got Barry Makes Birdies written in massive purple pen all over it. But obviously golf balls are expensive. So if I've got some that are in mint condition that just have some pen on, I don't want to not use them. So as you can see, this golf ball has got somebody else's markings all over it. So all I'm going to do is just lay down some kitchen roll so that I don't get any of the nail polish remover on the kitchen side. Grab the nail polish remover and one of these cotton bud things, I think they're called. I'm not really sure. I'll ask Zoella. Just pour a bit of that on there. Grab the golf ball. Just rub it on the marks. And as you can see, the marks are gone. say is if you don't know exactly how far you hit each one of your clubs, go and find out. I know everybody thinks they know how far they hit their clubs. When people then go on a launch monitor, they realise that actually the distance they hit each one of their clubs is quite different to what they thought. Obviously golf's hard enough as it is, but if you've got 165 yards to the pin and you pull out a 7 iron because you think you hit a 7 iron 165 yards, but actually you can only hit it 155 yards on a good day, what hope have you got? Any decent pro will have a launch monitor, either a TrackMan, a GC2 or a Flyscope. So just book a lesson and say what you want to do is spend 40 minutes, whatever it takes, going through your bag, getting your yardages. Don't think it's a waste of a lesson, because if you hit the right club for every shot throughout the whole season, that's going to save you so many more shots than any lesson on your technique possibly could. The way I like to do it is just hit a few shots with each club. I'm making swings as if I was out on the course. There's no point me standing there smashing it as hard as I can to try and get a longer carry number because that isn't what I'm going to do on the course. I discount any particularly bad shots because what I want to know is how far each club goes with a normal strike. I always prefer to work in carry distance over total distance because once you know that number you can factor in everything else on the day. So if you're playing on really soft greens and you're trying to fly it all the way to the flag, you've got the carry number, that's great. If you're playing in the middle of summer and it's bone dry, you might think, okay, I need to land this 20 yards short, but if you know how far you carry it, you can then make that calculation to try and finish pin high. Right, so I'll start with my wedges, which are Cleveland 588 RTX. So they're a couple of years old, this model. Um, I've got them in a 60 degree, a 56 and a 52 degree. Before I got these, I always had a sort of specialist lob wedge, but other than that, I just had the wedges that were part of my iron set. What I would say is if you've never had specialist wedges before, it's definitely worth trying out. They're a lot more versatile than the wedges that you tend to get with your iron set. Obviously you've got far more variety of bounce options and grinds so you can get them set up to your exact specifications and the type of course that you play. I've had these wedges for two, coming up three years now, and obviously I play and practice quite a lot, so they are getting pretty tired, so I'm probably gonna have to replace them soon. In all likelihood, I'll just get the newer version of these because I love them. So my 60 degree on a full shot carries about 75 yards. My 56 degree carries about 85 yards. My 52 degree carries about 100 yards. My irons are Ping I-25 in a silver dot, which I think is about three quarters of an inch longer and maybe two degrees upright. I'm not 100% sure. I wasn't custom fit for these, but I've been on a Ping fitting day where they did the kind of test that they normally do and basically suggested that these are pretty much what I would be fitted into, so they're not miles off you know, what I need. Uh, I've got a stiff shaft. Now I've got a sort of strange relationship with these irons where I've had really good rounds with them, you know, they're absolutely fine, but 
I've never really fallen in love with them. So I'm constantly considering getting new irons and never quite getting around to it. It's a bit of a tricky one really because I don't know exactly what I need from a set of irons. Now my pitching wedge carries about 125 yards and that really is a bit of an issue. So 125 yards and my next club is 100 yards. So I've got a 25 yard gap at that end of my bag, that's really way too much. So when I replace those wedges, what I may look to do is get 50, 54 and 58. I don't think I'd really lose anything by having a 58 instead of a 60, and then obviously the 50 would be a little bit closer in yardage to my wedge, so I'd hopefully have a smaller gap there. So my 9 iron carries about 140 yards, my 8 iron about 150, a 7 iron about 160 yards, 6 iron 170, 5 iron 180 yards, and my 4 iron about 190 yards. I recently added in this Ping G crossover. Um, I've got this in a stiff flex 70 gram outer shaft. So this goes maybe 210, 220 in the air. Okay, so my driver is a Ping G LS Tech in a 9 degree head, I've got it set at 9 degrees, and an extra stiff 65 gram shaft. Now, this is the first club that I was ever custom fitted for. So before this, I was using a Big Bertha from uh, a few years ago, I think it was a 2014 model. I was hitting it okay, but I knew I was hitting it too spinny, and that was costing me some distance. So I went up to Gainsborough, and they were able to bring my spin down, improve on my launch characteristics, so I do now get another probably 10, 15, sometimes 20 yards on my drives versus that big Bertha. And I carry that driver about 260 yards, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes obviously a little bit less if I don't catch it. While I was there, I also got fitted for the three wood, Ping G, 14 and a half degree. Before this, I had a TaylorMade SLDR three wood, and I hated it really. Um, it could hit it well off the tee, but it was so hot that it would end up pretty much the same distance as my driver. So it wasn't really any use on a kind of hole where you think, well, I can't hit driver because there's a bunker or a water hazard or whatever that's going to be in play. Um, it didn't offer me that option as a layup because it was pretty much the same distance. And I absolutely hated hitting it off the deck. It was just, I never did it. It was pretty much only my bad to give Tyrone something to sit on. Whereas with this Ping G, I'm happy hitting it off the tee and also hitting it off the deck. And I carry this 230, 240 yards. So with a bit of run, you're getting out there 260, sometimes even 270 yards. That's enough on most holes. And finally, my putter. Uh, it's not an Odyssey putter, despite what the head cover would suggest. I was just given that when I went to the Open a couple of years ago. Uh, so it's a Ping Answer Cadence TR, um, just kind of classic blade, really. So it's got a simple little alignment aid there on the back. Um, just a normal grip. I've never really gone in for one of the super chunky grips. I've never really felt the need. I know they work well for a lot of people, but I just like how simple this is. So yeah, there are the clubs in my bag. As you can probably tell, I'm a little bit at a crossroads in terms of what to do. I'm thinking about getting some new irons, but I really don't know what to do about them. So I know I could get a set of irons that I hit 15 or 20 yards further per club than mine, but I don't know if that's necessarily gonna help my scores because if they're lower spinning, they're not gonna necessarily stop as quickly at the other end. I love the idea of having a set of blades. So I think Mizuno MP4s are about the best looking club that I've ever seen. But I hear so many different things. Some people say blades are no harder to hit than any other club. Other people say that blades are much less forgiving and why do you not have as much help as you can possibly get from the technology? I think what I need to do is go to a kind of independent fitter where they are real experts, somewhere where I can just try a lot of different clubs from different manufacturers, different types of clubs, so more bladed clubs to more forgiving clubs. But yeah, let me know, have you got any ideas? What clubs do you use? Do you like them? Do you think I should get them? Or more importantly, have you been anywhere, have you heard of anywhere that you think is particularly good for a fitting? It's something that I might do in the next week or two. Yeah, please do let me know if you've got any ideas at all that you think might help me, just pop a comment down below. I'll obviously read them all, I don't get that many, so that won't take me too long. But yeah, I'd really welcome any advice. A club fell over. A what? A club fell over.